this point, your game should look something kind of like this. Your code should be fairly complete. And when you run it, you have cherry, at least one cherry falling, and you can control. But nothing really happens yet. So what we're going to talk about in this video lecture is to do the collisions so that if I am the cherry is colliding with your picture, you can count that or you can do the opposite and you can count the ones that you avoid. So that's really going to be up to you. I'm going to show you to do the collisions. You can count it as a good thing or you can count it as a bad thing. So we're going to add encounters and collisions. So you have your program open already. One thing we can do is we can take out ball radius because that was just for our practice. We don't have a ball anymore. We have two pictures. And as you're looking through the code, one thing you might notice is we've got some duplication. So I look here in new game. I've got these three lines of code to get a new cherry. I've also got the same lines of code right here to get a new cherry once it hits the bottom. So I've got some duplication. Whenever you see this, most of the time you can take that out by creating a function for it. So I'm going to create a function that's going to do these lines of code and I can call it instead of keep duplicating. And I'm going to call this one new cherry. Okay, now we are using global variables, so I'm not going to pass in parameters like we have in, in other programs. But I'm going to take these three lines of code, that's to get my new cherry, I'm going to cut it from there and put it here. I am making some changes here that I want to be used in all the other programs. So once I do this, I know I'm going to have to make some of them global. So I've got the cherry position and the cherry velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and make those global. Then every time I get a new cherry, it'll work through the whole program. Now I cut the code out from right here. So now I need to call the new cherry function. I can come down here where I have the duplication, which is right here. And I can take all this code out replace it with new cherry. It is a void function, so I just do a void function call. And I've just gotten rid of some duplication, I kind of streamlined my code. That's always a good idea. So if you see duplication happening in your code and you have a way to get around that by creating a new function, I do encourage you to do that. Now we're going to add in a couple of counters so that when I do have a collision, it will count it, and if I have a miss, now you don't have to do both, I'm going to go ahead and show you both, and then you can choose what you want to do. So I'm going to add in two variables, eaten and missed. And you can call them something else, maybe you want to have collisions or escapes, you know, so depending on how you're going to do your game, that might be determining what you call these two variables. And of course we're going to initialize them at zero. Now when I have a new game, I might want to start them back at zero. If you want to, then go ahead and include this line of code. Now you might not want to, because maybe you want it to be cumulative. So it's really going to be kind of up to you. But if you do put them here in your new game, then realize you have to add them to your global. In order to display the values of the counters, I need to have some text on my canvas. So I'm going to come in here to my draw. And I do have one section here that's drawing everything. So maybe at this time it's good to kind of add in some comments. So what we're doing right here is check if cherry is out of bounds. So I can add in just some kind of a comment here. And what we're doing here is just drawing all my objects. So putting in a few comments here can help other people looking at your code. Maybe somebody else wants to modify it. So I'm drawing the smiley, I'm drawing the cherry. Uh, if you want to have more than one cherry, you know, kind of think about that. You could call it and just pass in different values here. Kind of keeping track of that kind of thing. Uh, we're going to put in two canvases. So draw text. Now the first thing that goes in draw text is your message. I'm just going to put some drag right here. And then you're going to put the location. I'm going to start at 20. 20, that's kind of up in the upper left-hand corner. And then the size, and I'm going to do it about size 16, not too big, not too small, and then the color. So I'm going to start with yellow, because yellow starts look really good on black. And then if I want to show both, the eaten and the mist, I have to have two. So depending on what you plan on showing, 
Now I'm going to start at the same X, but I need to go down. So I'm going to make my second position maybe like 40. And maybe I do a different color. You know, once again, it's up to you. Now what's going to go here is my message. And I can do the whole thing right here. It's going to be kind of a long string. So if I don't want this line of code to be too long, I can throw in a local variable. This is nothing that's going to affect anything else in any other function. So I can just make a local variable right here. I'm just going to call it message one. This is going to be um, cherries eaten. And then str eaten. Okay, so I could put this whole thing right here with this goes. But I think sometimes it's easier just to chunk it up a little bit so you can see what's going on. So this is optional how you want to do it, but I'll just do a message two. This is going to be cherries missed. Okay, now I am going to be using these two variables here in this function. So I'm going to go ahead and include them in global. And I'm just going to have to decide when I want to do either of these. So here my cherry is falling, but here it's reached the bottom. And I get a new cherry. So at this time, I'm going to increment missed. So I've only gone this far so far, but we can just run it and see if this part is working before we talk about the actual collision. Now, it's, I'm getting junk there because even though I created my two messages, I forgot to put them right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and change my junk to message one and this junk to message two. So I'm going to use my string variables in replace of the quotation marks right here. But you could do it either way. Okay, so now I have cherries missed and cherries missed. And there we go. So the missed is working. And of course, I haven't done the collisions yet, so I can't eat any of my chairs. But if we're doing incremental development, I just do a little bit and I make sure it works. And I'm going to do it. So let's talk about collisions. I've got a diagram here that's going to kind of map it all out. So when you're doing a circle, according to the documentation, the point that you give it should be the center of the circle. So really, it's talking about having it here. But when you work on it in code, it seems to me what's happening is the point is really just kind of a corner. So you can try it as the center, I did, and the code didn't really work correctly because even though the documentation says it's the center, it seems to be the corner. So when I drew this big circle for my smiley, this was the position. So this is my pick position, and it's really kind of the corner of the circle. This is the X, and this is the Y. Now I have a cherry falling down on it, and what I want to know is if it's within my smiley face, then it's going to be a collision, and I want it to eat the cherry. So the same thing's going to happen with the cherry. Here's my cherry, and here's the position that I give it. So the X is position zero, and the Y position 1. So what would make it collide? If I take a look at just the X's, if the X value of this circle is within this circle, I have a collision. So what does that look like? I've got if the chair position at 0 is greater than the pit position at 0, then I know it's going to be on this side. But it can't just be greater than that side. It has to be less than this side. It has to be within this range. So I also want to know if this pick position is greater than the edge. Well, what's the edge? It's the pick position plus 50. Now, how did I get the 50? If I look back at my code, I used 25 as the radius. So the diameter is 50. Now, if you use something other than a circle, you're just going to have to take a look at your picture and determine what is the width of your picture. And that's what you're going to add to your pick position to know what the range is. So I'm going to come up with an if statement, something kind of like this. So if the cherry position at, at x is greater than the pick position at x, and the pick position, which is, I'm over here now, is less than this. Now this isn't going to be perfect code. You're going to probably want to come in here and add something to this one as well. Maybe you want to add the width. 
So my cherry, it's radius eight. So maybe I want to add 16 here, or you can kind of manipulate the numbers. But we'll start like this, and then just realize you're going to come in here, and maybe I'm going to add something to this or adjust this number. So this is a good starting off place. And then you adjust this till you get the cherries just in the center where you want them. Now this is only my X, but if my if it's within here, but it hasn't reached the cherry yet, should it be a collision? No, we also have to check the Y's. But it's very similar. So if this is greater than this, but less than the bottom, so what is my height? Well, since mine's a circle, the height's going to be the same, plus 50. You have to take a look at your picture and determine your picture's height, and that's what you add to it. So first I'm checking just the X's. And if that's the case, then I'm going to check the Y's. And if both of these are true, then my cherry is within my smiley, and it should be a collision. What do I want to happen if it collides? Well, I'm going to increment my Eaton, and I'm going to get a new cherry. I already have the code for a new cherry. I know how to increment, so I can implement this pretty well. So let's come back to our code. I'm going to, I have one if statement here just to check in with the cherry. Let's add in another one. So I'm going to check if collision. And it's going to be that if statement that you saw. So I'm going to check my cherry x. But the x is at slot 0. And if it's greater than, you can do greater than, greater than, equal to the pick position at x, which is 0. And, I have to, so that's one bound, I have to check the other one. Oh, I didn't do position. Careful with your, oops. Ooh, okay, careful with your typing there. I'm going to check the other range, so it has to be less than or equal to my pick position plus... And you're probably going to want to come over and add something here. I can even just do a plus 8 right now just to give it a try. But these numbers are a little bit manipulative to get the chair just where you want it. So here's my first test. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my Y, which is at 1s. So I'm just going to change my zeros. Now these numbers could be different for your small picture since you might not have just a circle. So once again, think about here's my width of my whole small image, and here's the height of my whole small image. And then this is the height of my small cherry and the width of my cherry. So just kind of think about these numbers and manipulate them as you get just the way you want. Now what I want to do if there is a collision is I want to increment my calendar, which is eaten. And I want to get a new chair. So thankfully, I already have a function for that, and it's simply a matter of calling it. So let's see if I can eat a cherry. I missed that one. Like this one? Okay, I got it. Missed that one. So this is where you're going to do some really good testing. Check the edges and see, you know, did it go through it when you think it should have eaten it? you might want to make a change. Now, if this is going too slow for you, so why can't my cherry, my smiley face go faster? You know? So what you can do is manipulate your acceleration. So if I think two is too slow, maybe I want to make it three. And wherever you change it, make sure you change it in both the key up and the key down. Otherwise, some kind of strange things happen. You can try it out if you're not sure. But here we go. So it's moving a little bit faster, so you can determine. Okay, now you see how it kind of went through and it didn't eat it and you think you should. So this is where you might, okay, so when I check that one range, it wasn't quite right. Manipulate your numbers. So I'm going to be a good tester. That one should have eaten. So think about what you have to make a change in order for it to eat all the cherries you think it should be eating. You might have to subtract a number or add a number. Now what we haven't talked about is my smiley face colliding with the wall. See how I, it's kind of going off? So I'm going to let you figure that out. You already know how to do it for the cherry. and have looked about how to do it with the smiley face and the cherry. So how can you determine if 
my small image is hitting the wall. And if so, you might say that it's crashed. Maybe you're going to add in some lifes to your game and you lose a life if you crash. So think about how you, how you do the crash and think about what you want to happen if you do crash. We'll cover two more things coming up. We'll talk about doing an ending screen or some kind of a splash screen, like what if you do crash and you want to say you crashed and then kind of force them to start the game over again. We'll also talk a little bit about a timer. So we don't need a timer for this. You see it's working great, but there's not also a win or a loss. So maybe you want to do it where you have you know, one minute and see how many cherries you eat. You have to eat so many cherries to win. Or you can do it where you have like lives and if you go too long without eating a cherry you start to lose your life like some of the other games that you've played. So you can put in a timer even though there's one going automatically. You can use a timer to help add some winning and losing to your game. So kind of think about how you might want to make some changes. We'll talk we'll do a couple more lectures then about doing a separate screen and how to put in a timer. In the meantime Enjoy your day.